We finally got a water maker and I am so excited. This is amazing. My name is Billy, this is Sierra, and our pup Jetty. This is our home. Her name is Adrenaline. We decided normal lifestyle isn't quite right for us, so we've been living an unconventional but fulfilling life of challenge and adventure. Be sure to subscribe below and hop on board. Down dropped the breeze, the sails dropped down, to as sad as sad could be, and we did speak only to break the silence of the sea. All in a hot and copper sky, the bloody sun at noon, right up above the mast did stand, no bigger than the moon. Day after day, day after day, we stuck, nor breathed, nor motion, as idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean. Water, water everywhere, and all the boards did shrink. Water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. Salt water. So that's sometimes how we feel here, but we officially now have a water maker. Thank goodness. We've been wanting one for a while. We really realized we needed one when we were in the outer islands of the Bahamas, and there are very few marinas, there are very few places to get water. So we're going to be able to make fresh water from the salt water that our boat is sitting in 24-7. Unreal. Let's check out what's in the boxes. Looks like some pre-filters, a bunch of fittings, some posing, pre-filter housing. Oh, this is the auto flush system. I think that's just part of the bracket. This water maker that we're unboxing right now is a Rain Man water maker. It is the AC version. I was on the fence whether to get the AC version or the DC version. Obviously, if you guys have not been following along, you know that Sierra won the generator battle and we brought the little Honda 2000 watt gasoline generator. Since we have that generator on board, Everyone who I've talked to, Rainman included, suggested going with the AC water maker. They say just make the water, make it quick, make it often, and get it over with. Rather than the DC version where it's only like six to eight gallons per hour or something like that. This is like closer to 30 gallons an hour or something. So just much, much quicker. Run your generator hard for a little bit and then just get it over with and all your water's made. And that's why we went with the AC version. Plus, to be perfectly honest, we don't have enough excess solar where we could use a DC version solely from the solar po power we generate. Oh yeah, look at that sucker. Wow. I'm so pumped. So it looks like all our connections are made already, which is pretty cool. All the hoses are attached already. I think this is the valve, the gauge here. Let's see what's in the next box. Oh boy. There's the directions. Got a bunch of pre-filters, hoses, pre-filter housing there, um, extra fittings, some more fittings, some even more fittings, bunch of hose clamps. Put that inside there. Impeller. And here it is, the backbone to the whole system, the big pump. So 
So Rain Man water makers are known to be pretty portable and you can just kind of store them in there in a compartment in a hatch and then when you need to make water you just take them out, you throw the hose over the side and then you start making water from there and just super easy. Their motto is something like as soon as you take it out of the box you can have fresh water within 10 minutes. So I think a lot of people are taking this portable unit and and then Rain Man also sells it this way as a naked unit so you can kind of just mount it in your boat um, and have it permanently mounted. That way you don't have to take it out of your storage hatches every time you want to make water. It's just a system in your boat like most conventional water makers are. So in response to that I think Rain Man came up with a really cool mounting bracket that makes it super easy to mount on board. This sucks. mounting bracket for the membranes literally just mount it up to the wall and then mount the membranes inside of them and pop these covers on to hold them in place so you can use these mounting holes here in the bottom but it looks like there's some extra support here on the side so if you're like in a corner or whatever so excited so the first thing we're gonna do is decide where we want everything. It's gonna be a little bit of a challenge and it's also a balance of do we want this stuff to be kind of exposed but easily accessible or hidden away but a little more tough to access it if we have to do any repairs or maintenance or anything like that. I think I found a really good spot for the pump where it's out of the way in a storage area but still good accessibility all around the pump so I can access it when we need to change the oil. All right, here's our port head area. I think that we're just gonna mount it right here. Probably something like that. Yep, probably something like that. Ideally, we'd have a nice big open compartment where we can mount these and just kind of hide them. But it's a boat. I mean, you can kind of see the boat systems a lot around this, especially this boat. It's such a simple boat. It's not like a luxurious, just pristine, finished boat. Um, so the systems are exposed. Also, at the same time, our friends Connor and Steph, uh, you guys met them before on board their boat, Grace. They showed me their water maker, and they also have it mounted in their head um, in a similar way, just exposed kind of... Uh, location that way you, they can kind of look at the seals and monitor it and if they do have to do any maintenance or anything to it it's right there super easy to access so uh that was his argument for mounting it there and i think i'm gonna follow the same lead and do the same thing Yeah, I think that's our spot right there. There's no other, there's not many other options, let's say that. I think that's gonna be the best spot. Our water tanks are right here next to us. Our water fill is right there, although we'll probably just plumb it into the tank directly. Where we're gonna mount the pump is directly on the other side of this bulkhead in this area. All our lines and everything are right in this whole general area. We have a sink right here to run some test water through. Yeah, and I'll probably mount the auto flush system. There's some controls for the auto flush system right in this area, or maybe, maybe back behind this bulkhead. I think there's a spot.
All right, I'm really happy with that so far. Let me show you where I'm thinking of mounting the pump and the filters. So this is literally the same bulkhead that the membranes are attached to right there. Um, obviously, previous one of the previous owners had did some alterations in here. So I think we're gonna put a piece of board across here and just have the pump right here. And then I think we'll be able to mount our pre-filters back here. So we have two pre-filters. One is for the pre-filter for the whole system. And the other is a filter for the auto flush system. So I think they'll both be able to mount there. I'm gonna line them up right now and see. Perfect. Probably go one like somewhere right here. And then the other one right here. Auto flush filter, pre filter for the water maker system. All right, we had to go to Budget Marine here in Grenada real quick to get some supplies. Just some generic plumbing stuff some tubing this sucker is what it really needed seawater strainer i wanted one a little bit smaller this is bigger than the ones for our engine just to protect the pump the lift pump on the front side of the water maker and then a bunch of random fittings and stuff We have everything hooked up for the water maker except the auto flush. It's plumbed, but it's just not wired or anything. So we don't need that right now. Uh, we'll just have to manually flush the system when we're done. If I did everything right, we should be making fresh water in just a few minutes. So.
the moment of truth. All right, so we got the water maker running. This is our product water line. Um, I didn't plumb it into the tank yet because our water fill is right here, right next to all our water maker system. So for now, I'm just gonna, once our product water is ready, I'll just throw it right into the fill of the fresh water tank. Maybe eventually I'll plumb it into the system. We also have our brine line, that's this green line, and all our brine salty water is going overboard right now. Now what I'm gonna do is just tighten this valve here until our gauge right here reads 850 PSI. And at that point, we should be making fresh water. I'll taste it through this hose and we should be good. All right, so we've got our product water flowing. Our gauge is at 850 PSI. This should be fresh water. Um, I'm gonna do a little taste test. Do you wanna taste it? All right, Sierra's gonna do a little taste test. Fresh? Yeah. Right into our fresh water fill. Making fresh water. So how long should it take? Um, I think the rating is like, uh, it's something around 30 gallons per hour. So 30, 32 gallons per hour, something like that. I think. So with any water maker system, you don't want to leave the membranes unpickled for more than seven days or so. And at the end of every session of making water, you have to rinse through your whole water maker system and the membranes especially with fresh water. So this solves both those problems pretty automatically. Also, one other cool thing about this thing is that it tells you how many days left until the next auto flush cycle. So. However many times the blue LED flashes is how many days left until it's going to auto flush again. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Which makes perfect sense because we just hit the auto flush so 7 days later it's going to flush again. I just set it to auto flush for 6 minutes. Alright so now I'm just going to measure how much water comes out. So I put the brine hose in here. I'm just going to hold it up for this one it's not long enough. I'll hit our flush button to manually flush it. Perfect, just closed. So this is a five gallon jug. It looks like we definitely have more than half, which would be two and a half gallons, maybe around three gallons. So that's perfect. Our auto flush is set at six minutes. So every seven days, as long as I don't touch that button, every seven days it'll auto flush uh, for six minutes. So some of the things that we can do now that we have a water maker. First, 
thing that I've really been loving is laundry. Bucket laundry, laundry, of course, but it's still laundry. We're not having to pay to go to the laundromat, to go to the marina. Just do it on the bucket with our new fresh water, and it works really well. We've been finding in through the out islands of Bahamas and the Caribbean, laundry was actually getting pretty expensive, and the rundown laundry machines that we've been going to uh, weren't quite doing the job like our stuff wasn't getting super clean it's kind of been an unexpected benefit to have all this extra fresh water on board to be able to do bucket laundry and even though it's by hand sierra's been doing it all by hand it's even in the long run a little bit easier we don't have to take the dinghy and search for a laundry laundromat or laundry service or anything like that um, and then bring it back to the boat we just do it right here on the back deck and time because laundry takes a long time no matter what size machine you're using so we have to get on the dinghy go to the laundry machine spend all day there when we could be working now i can do it here while billy works and it's, it's much easier another huge benefit for us is that we can rinse everything off our fishing gear our spear fishing gear the dinghy engine the dinghy anything metal like we don't have to be so conservative when we rinse this stuff off yet you should rinse metal off like every single day all the time to keep it lasting as long as possible but when you have very limited supply of fresh water you get kind of skimpy on that we'll st still rinse our expensive reels off and stuff like that but now we can rinse all our metal off and not have to feel guilty about it yeah so that's a great thing we can also use that water to wash the deck so the deck doesn't get as dirty take longer showers ourselves so we smell a little better one of the big things, especially traveling through Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico and the Northern uh, Caribbean Islands. And here, even right? Grenada, after it rained, we are a little concerned with the water quality um, coming out of the hoses from the marina. So now we know our drinking water is just pure water and we don't have to be concerned about it. Another big thing is that when we relied on getting water from marinas, we really had to plan ahead. We just had to make sure that when we were getting ready to run out of water or when we we're getting close to it, we had to be by a marina and be in a scenario where we could pull up to the dock and get fresh water. If not, you, we could always use the jugs and the dinghy, but we still had to be by a water source. So in the out islands of the Bahamas, like that was a little bit tricky. Conception Island, for example, like we had to go all the way around to Salt Pond Long Island. On Long Island to get water. It was like, what, 80 miles or something from Conception? And another thing with going to the marina to get water, sometimes we're like, okay, we're already here. Should we stay and do laundry and get groceries and everything while we're at the dock? So then we end up spending money to stay at the dock when we could have just dinghied. So it's just now we don't have to go unless we're getting fuel to any marina and saving money. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, I'm going to shoot an email to Rain Man and see if they'll monitor the comments a little bit. Maybe if you have any technical questions or anything like that, they'll be able to answer them in the comments. Um, other than that, let us know what you think in the comments below. Do you guys have a water maker? Are you happy with it? Do you think we made the right choice? Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you guys are subscribed as well and click the notification button so that you get notified when our new video comes out and we'll see you next time.